If you're a Formula 1 fan, there's a pretty good chance that you've played F122, but you might have wondered how close is F122 to the real thing? To answer that question, I've teamed up with my buddy Alex Gillen, who's also done a video from a driver's point of view, but today on Break F1, we're going to take a performance engineer's point of view and explain to you guys how realistic F122 the game actually is. So here's my initial conversation with Alex a couple weeks ago to set the stage for what we're going to be looking at today. All right, so I've recorded my lap for you uh, and uh, I want you to work your magic. So I've recorded the lap around Hungary. Um, I feel like Hungary is probably one of the closer tracks to real life because I'm trying to remove the track variable. It's about a second off the world record because, you know, I'm not an alien, but uh, no, I feel like alien. it's no, well, not, pretty, not. A second off is pretty good, though. It's the closest I can get, actually. I think it's probably my best track, to be fair. So, it, it, yeah, we'll take it. Hopefully, you can work your your performance engineer magic and figure out yes, and figure out and figure out what the differences are. So let's get straight into the data, but we're going to start off with the basics first. We'll look at the overall lap time difference through the lap as well as the car speeds, and then we'll add details as we go. Russell's pole lap was a 117.377. And Alex Gillen set a lap which was about two seconds faster than that. I know this sounds absurd. I mean, how is Alex faster than George Russell? Toto, get this man on the phone. Do you drink during the no, day? No, 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 no. You do. But actually, this will make a lot more sense in just a minute. So here we have a lap of Budapest. The top graph here is the car speed and the bottom graph is the lap time difference. The pink trace is the track data, so this is real life, and the green data is Alex in F122. So on the left here is the start of the lap, and on the right is the end of the lap. This lap time trace, when the green line goes above zero, that means the track is faster, and when the green line goes below zero, that means the game is faster. Now, opening the lap, the track data is a bit faster down to turn one, and Russell's also able to carry a little bit more speed into turn one. Again, Russell faster on the straight down to turn two, and carrying a little bit more speed through the apex of two, but he's losing a little bit of lap time to Alex starting here. From this point onwards, George doesn't stand a chance versus Alex, at least in terms of lap time. Through the chicanes and the change of direction bits in sector two, the, the game is just so much faster than the track. So George is faster through the high speed right hand of turn 11 onto that back straight, but if you look at it, you know, going 10 kilometers an hour faster through the corner, you don't really gain that much lap time, and that's, that's normal. So finally, we get to turns 12, 13, and 14. You notice that Alex is apexing a lot earlier, carrying a lot more speed and accelerating out of these corners better. He gains a second in the last three corners over the track. By the end of the lap, Alex is two seconds faster and some of the esports sweats or super aliens are even about a second faster than this. Now, does this mean that F122 is completely unrealistic and it's miles off? First glance, the answer is obviously yes, but there's a lot more going on here. And let me explain why the game isn't actually that far off reality. Really, we need to add a couple of more data channels to understand what's actually happening here. Now, we've added the throttle position, the gear selection, and the DRS, which is on or off. The brake pressure data that we get from the track is either on or off, and it's not particularly useful, so I've left it out of the comparison completely. So we've got a little bit more data to look at to answer the question, is F122 realistic or is it pretty far away from reality? We wanna understand, is the traction different? Is it the cornering grip? Is it the downforce, the high speed grip? What is it? So let's look at the data. Now, the first thing that we noticed at the beginning of the lap is that the track was faster down to both turn one and turn two, which are 180 degrees different. So it's probably not the wind here, but Alex actually had a suggestion to what this might be. What you're saying is DRS is more powerful in real life than the game. Is that what you're saying there? On this instance with this car, with that downforce setup on the track, yes. All the asterisks is added in because you're an exactly, engineer. Yeah, very good, right, yeah. I haven't looked at the game files. There's, I can't remember exactly what the percentage is. Maybe something like 15, is that too high? I can't remember. Yeah, there's there's, there's about, a percentage of, of drag that you drop and it's just set for every track. You drop 15%. But obviously you, you potentially have more drag at certain tracks if you run higher wings. So I guess it's maybe somewhat somewhat realistic yeah. in that way. But yeah, sure. what I will say is that that doesn't necessarily surprise me because what you'll what you'll also find, not in this data, because it's a single lap, uh, a single True. qualifying lap with no traffic, but the dirty air is also much less in the game than real life and always has been even before the 2022 True. season when dirty air was much improved. Basically, in order to not make DRS ridiculously powerful, sure. they've, they've kind of nerfed dirty air so you can follow a bit closer. So it's not frustrating to follow another car, but they also nerfed DRS to kind of balance the two. Because if, if obviously if DRS was super powerful, whereas dirty air wasn't, you'd just be flying past in a straight and it'd be the easiest thing in the world. So 
I, I guess that doesn't surprise me, and that and that is a decision that they've made because it's quite a mainstream game to not sure. make it super frustrating for like a pad user that just jumps on for the first hour and is like, why have I got no grip when I'm in a race? I can't get anywhere near these cars to overtake and just finds it really frustrating, um, even with a reduced dirty air effect in, in real life. So I think this is quite a reasonable assumption and simplification for the game, and you know, it only makes a small difference compared to the, you know, two seconds that we're looking for an overall lap time. So let's dig into it. The high speed corners are the ones that are most impacted by the downforce level. So you can see we've got turn four, which is the fast left hander. And we've got turn 11, which is the fast right hander towards the end of the lap. And between the track and the game, they're actually a little bit of a mixed bag. And it's not really conclusive in terms of lap time gained or lost to these corners the track and the game are very similar. Next, let's look at the medium speed corners. Incidentally, these are all in the middle of the track and they're about 150 to 200 kilometers an hour. And in this instance, the game is faster in all of these corners. So the medium speed corners are still heavily impacted by the overall downforce of the car, but that's not to say that we don't have something with the tire grip happening here as well. We're gonna look at the low speed corners next, which are all under 150 kilometers an hour. Or so maybe a bit slower than that, but there's something really interesting going on here. So at the beginning of the lap, the low speed corners are actually pretty well matched. But at the end of the lap, the low speed corners are 10 to 15 kilometers an hour faster in the game than reality. My first speculation is that in the game, you have much, much smaller thermal evolution or through lap change of grip level than you do on the track. In pretty simple terms, the way Formula One tires generate grip is kind of two ways. So the more stress or load that you put into the tires, the more temperature you build up in the carcass of the temperature. In reality, there's a peak condition where these tires generate the most grip. If they're too cold or too hot, you start to lose grip. You can also overheat the tires in another way. So if you slide the car too much on the exit or you have too much wheel spin, the surfaces of the tire can heat up and your tire will lose grip until these temperatures come down again. And that could happen one or two corners later. But it looks like in the time trial mode in F122, you don't really have much thermal sensitivity or at least not that much through lap evolution in tire temperature or some other mechanic which causes grip. The tires just look strong throughout the entire lap, which honestly isn't a bad thing for a time trial mode in a game like this, but we'll talk about that more in a second. Something with the overall grip level is amiss we can't conclude that it's thermal or not, but this isn't a dead end. Looking more closely at the data, there's another trend. If you look at the apexes or minimum speed of the corners, there's actually a pretty clear trend between Alex in the game and George on track. Alex's apex or minimum speed comes much earlier in the corner in most of these places, and he's able to get on the throttle better. So my first reaction to that is F122's traction is way too good, but Alex and a lot of the other F122 community have a different thought about this. What you'll find is a lot of league races and a lot of sort of sim races feel like that the F122 traction is way too uh, little. The, 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 you don't get enough traction and you have to be so cautious with the throttle. From video content alone, appears to be more traction in real life than the F122 game because it because that's one thing they changed this for this game as well. Traction is a lot more difficult than it was previously. And a lot of people don't like that. A lot of people feel, feel it's not realistic and we need more traction in the game. But you're saying from this data, it seems roughly Sample right. One. Alex says the general consensus that the traction in F122 is too weak compared to reality. Looking at the data, I think the traction looks too strong. And there's a few potential reasons why that could be. A lot of the time, drivers will mask car characteristics by driving around them. But that has some interesting implications when we're comparing a game to reality. For example, if the traction on a car is pretty terrible, you might see a driver taking a more veed approach to the corner. That means the driver will break the car more in a straight line, rotate the car quickly towards the apex, and then focus on getting the car as straight as possible to accelerate out of the corner. But in this instance, it looks like Alex can carry more speed into the corner and get on the throttle sooner. So what's happening? This to me sounds like an overall difference in the tire model characteristics and behavior. Tire models are something that Formula One teams spend a lot of time and money on. They take so many measurements, they gather so much data, and they spend a lot of time with the drivers in the simulator trying to get this tire model to behave as close to reality as possible. Now, the fact that these lap traces that we have here in the car speed profile looks even remotely similar, I think the game's actually done a pretty reasonable job with this, but that still doesn't mean there's not room for improvement. Now, considering you're looking for two seconds of lap time in the second half of the lap, I think if we got the grip of the car overall quite a bit closer, I think the trends in terms of what's actually really different about the tire model would become much more clear. 
the drivers are already saying the traction's too poor in the game, but if we take more grip out, this is going to get even worse. Cynically, I'd say that none of these guys have ever driven a real Formula One car, but at the same time, we're only looking at one circuit. Correlating or comparing one circuit and saying that's the problem or saying, oh, I fixed the correlation is pretty foolish, actually. For now, all that I can say is that the rear tires combined grip characteristics are probably quite a bit different to reality. But there's something else that we need to consider here. Arguably, if this was a perfect representation of the actual tire, most people probably would not even be able to drive the car. Keep in mind this game is meant to be accessible for a wide range of players. You know, I should be able to go home and pick up a controller and play this game, and the esports competitors should be able to sit on their sim rigs and compete on this game. So there's a whole wide range of types of players that should be able to enjoy this game. Driving a Formula One car quickly requires a lot of confidence and skill, and I bet the game has a lot of characteristics which are there to make the car a little bit more forgiving. In reality, you're not gonna have perfect tire temperatures for your entire qualifying lap, which looks like one of our biggest discrepancies. But we've got a lap which is about two seconds off, so does that mean that F122 is really unrealistic? Well, yes and no. I think the game has done a lot of things really well. If you look at the lap overall, the straight line performance is pretty reasonable, so that means we've got a good combination of engine power and drag. If you look at the high speed corners, they look close enough considering we've got two different drivers. And this says we've probably got a reasonable compromise in tire grip and downforce level. The fact that we're also in time trial mode and we don't have stuff like wind, that's a big factor in terms of how different a lap could be to another one. Wind doesn't just change your top speed if you have a tailwind or headwind. Wind also has huge impact on the balance through a corner and how much grip you have in a corner. So the fact that we don't have a wind model in the game, uh, the game should be quite a bit faster than the track in this instance. There's also so many other things that it's probably difficult for the game to model correctly because they don't have all of the data and they've got pretty good assumptions that make it close enough. I've tried to keep this basic, but realistically, there's so many things we need more information to answer properly. So for now, I think this is a pretty good look at what's going on, but what else can we do? So Alex is going to go away and look at the settings from F122 and see if there's anything else that we can tweak in terms of tire grip or thermal evolution. And we're going to come back and talk about that again. Now that I've written the code to export the F122 game data and compare that to the track, it makes it super easy. So I think we should look at another track. We've looked at Budapest, which is a pretty high downforce circuit. We should look at something like Monza and look at a more average circuit like Barcelona. On a sample of one, I think the F122 game looks pretty reasonable. And it's important to keep in mind that this is a racing game, not a racing sim. It's supposed to be for everybody. So thanks to Alex for this awesome video idea. Be sure to drop him a follow. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to follow. And we'll see you guys soon for part two of the F1 correlation series.